Hello everyone, welcome back to A Mortician's Tale. Last time we uh, took care of, <laughs> um, helped Mrs. Garcia with her funeral. So I wonder what kind of emails we got today. I'm so frustrated right now. Okay, so let me explain this in a bit more detail. A colleague and I were discussing the tight laser's liver specimen that we have here at the museum. It's from a woman who died in 1907, and the liver is tapered inwards from what the doctor leading the autopsy believed was too tight lacing on her corset. It's fascinating, because it's kind of a controversial topic. Tight lacing was super popular. While people associated it with fainting or hysteria, uh, it's actually been associated with visceroptosis, which is when the organs fall to the lower part of the abdomen, right? Which is super unsettling can also be caused by being pregnant. So, of course, it's probably messed up some bones, but likely didn't do this kind of internal organ damage. And I'm tired of the condescension about my wardrobe. It also implies I don't know what I'm doing. These are the kind of things I specifically research, yet I'm treated like I know nothing about. I'm having a day, Charlie. Uh, can I rant for just a second? I'm so tired of hearing strangers, colleagues, anybody, <coughs> male colleagues, <coughs> Get on my case for wearing corsets. I wear them under my blazer and over a nice blouse. So it's not like I'm dressing inappropriately, even though dress codes are such sect, sexist bullshit anyways. But like I hate how their misogyny gets filled in faux concern. Jen, I'm just worried you're damaging your body. You know what corsets do to liver, right? Corsets don't do anything to livers. They're definitely not hurting me as much as your condescension is hurting my head. Ugh, I'm sorry. I'm out of sorts right now. Send you another email in a little bit when I've cooled off a bit. Okay. Uh, hi, Amy. Please pass along our deepest thanks to you and your staff for the wonderful job they did with our mother's funeral. It was really lovely. Our family so rarely gets together. It was nice seeing everyone come out for such a beautiful service. My son never gets to see his family. Also, it was incredibly kind of you to let us bring our own food in. Getting to share home-cooked meals, sharing stories, being there together, it was, it meant a lot. So what I'm saying is, it was nice for everyone to be like, uh, to be there like that, together in that way. And I know how much of that was due to the work of your staff, especially your funeral director. Thank you for making this difficult time easier for all of us. Just passing this message along, thanks for the hard work, Charlie. You're, um, you're welcome. A story about death from Matthew? Hey there, Charlie. I was driving around the other day, you know, taking our clients on the last trip around town. I was thinking. Strange, I know. Did I ever tell you the first time I went to a funeral? I was a teenager about to start university. A friend of mine was killed in a car accident. Totally out of the blue. Really tragic stuff. Messed me and my friends up real good. But, so, the big day. We all got into our best suits and dressed dresses and packed ourselves into a few cars. There were a lot of us. So we had at least three different cars full of us, like clown cars, you know. While we're in the procession going to the cemetery, somebody in our car got a phone call from a friend in a different car. Turns out some asset driver, doesn't know to not get in the way of the procession, drove through the intersection and smashed right into our friend's car. Nobody was hurt, thank God, but can you imagine getting that call? Anyways. One of my friends in the same car as me, the one who got the phone call, hung up and started laughing. Just laughing her ass off in that way that makes you not sure if they're really just crying or if they've gone fully off the deep end. And she laughed and then we all started giggling because like, go figure. Life is messed up sometimes, you know. There's no moral, no point to that story, I guess. I just remember that story and wanted to tell you. Because we work with death all the time, and I still sometimes get caught off guard by what it actually means. Oh, before you get any ideas, it has nothing to do with why I became a funeral director. That decision came totally later. There's nothing unremarkable. Somebody has to do it, and I have a strong stomach, so why not? See you in a bit, Charlie. What to wear when you're attending a funeral from a different culture? Should we read these? Uh, you know what, let's just do that. It's part of the game. We all know everyone wants to be respectful at funerals. Don't talk too loudly, be kind, smile, refrain from making inappropriate jokes, at least around the grieving family. Hey, sometimes some people do need a little bit
bit of a pick-me-up during such hard times, so who are we to judge? And a big part of that is knowing what to wear. Roman Catholic funerals tend to lean more to the formal, black attire rule, and it works for us. Did you know this goes back to the days of the Roman Empire, when people would wear black as a symbol for mourning? Mourning. Black isn't universally the symbol for mourning, though. Mourning? Mourning? Though. <laughs> And if you're attending a funeral that is from a culture that is not your own, it's important to understand this. Some colors have different meanings, and despite your best intentions, the wrong choice could mean accidental offense. For example, in Hinduism and in Chinese cultures, white is a typical color for funerals. For Islam, though, it is less about the color you are wearing and more about how modestly you are dressed. Refrain from wearing any elaborate jewelry, be respectful of your behavior. For Sikh funerals, color of the clothing isn't as important, as is dressing modestly and being able to appropriately sit cross-legged. Actually, being respectful is just the number one rule for any funeral, no matter what really. Remember that, and please don't hesitate to ask what is and isn't appropriate to wear. If you are attending to support a friend, family member or partner, this day is not about you, so be sure to do whatever you can to be as respectful and supportive as possible. Even if that means not wearing what you're used to wearing at a funeral. Or even if it just means asking how you can you whoa. Asking how you can you appropriately show your respects. I don't think that sentence makes sense. Hi Charlie, Amy Rose, okay. Here are the instructions for your next body. You did a remarkable job on the first one. The family was very happy with you. No small feat, of course. Pleasing a grieving family isn't exactly the most comfortable of jobs. Your next job is a man named Mr. Duval, an elderly man, died of old age. Nothing fancy, just a standard funeral with embalming. You can reach out to his daughter, Lizzie Duval, if you have any questions. She's handling her father's passing as well as can be expected. So always don't hesitate to ask me any more questions. P.S. Charlie, dear, please remember to wear proper embalming gear. Formaldehyde is extremely dangerous. I know I don't need to tell you, but my maternal instincts are hard to ignore. I promise I won't mother you too well. Well, just a little. Ask Matthew. He knows. Okay, I'll get right on it. So we have to do an embalming this time. Oh man, all these these things. It, 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 will, it will teach us how a funeral home will work, basically. Traditional burials typically require embalming which preserves the body and prevents him from decomposing as quickly. Unless the family requests otherwise, all traditional burials will use embalming in the US. Let's start by cleaning the body. Click on the sponge, drag it over the body to clean it. Yeah, like I said, it's not that typical to embalm here as far as I know. Click on a razor and drag over the body to shave it. Really? Did that. Okay. In order to break rigor mortis, you'll have to massage the body. Click and drag over the body to massage it. That's a lot of work. The eyeballs deflate once the body starts decomposing. Click and drag an eye cap into each eye socket to give it shape. To keep the eyes shut, you need to glue them. Click and drag the glue onto each eye to shut it. Oh boy. The mouth sags and hollows once the body starts decomposing. Click and drag a cotton ball into the mouth to give it shape. To keep the mouth from opening, you'll need to saturate it shut. Click and drag the needle and thread over the jaw to close it. Click and drag the lotion over the body to moisturize it. This prevents the skin from drying out. This is so weird. Embalming involves removing blood and replacing it with preserving chemicals. Click and drag the scalpel over the neck to make an incision. Okay, just did that. You're going to need a tube for draining the blood. Click on the tube, drag it into the neck incision. Click on the cannula, drag it into the 
carotid artery. This is how you'll get the preserving chemicals into the bloodstream. There. Now you'll need to connect the embalming machine to the cannula. Grab some additional tubing, drag it to the cannula. There. Click the button on the embalming machine to turn it on. In order to evenly distribute the chemicals, you have to massage them through the body. Click and drag. Okay. This is really, really weird. Like I said, it's I, I don't think this is usual in here. We just... You die, you get cleaned. That's about it, as far as I know. I, I can even think that that I, for myself, if I die and, and this whole embalming process, that's disrespecting to me. I don't want this to happen. Because they're removing everything that makes me human. Great, now let's sew up the incision. Click and drag the needle and thread, okay. Now what? Almost done. You need to drain the organs of any remaining fluids. Click on a throw card, then click and hold on the abdomen until all the liquid has been drained. Oh, I was too early on this one. So freaking weird. And you're done. Mike will take care of Mr. Duval's makeup as well as dressing and putting him in a casket. It's time to attend a funeral. Well, here we go again. My goodness. Yeah, he looks a bit dead. Ah, came out of nowhere. I mean, it always sort of does, doesn't it? Yeah, one minute you're laughing, having fun, and then the next, poof, that person is gone. Just like, gone. Yeah, it's weird to think about for too long, like staring at the sun. Start to feel all fuzzy when I think about it. Mm -hmm. So weird, how our bodies just stop working like that. Yeah, yeah. So strange not seeing most people wearing white. White? Yeah, I think it's different for different family members. I can't remember. I've gone to many traditional funerals, so mostly white, but like, definitely not red, no matter what. Okay. He always wanted to take his grandkids to the park, play catch. He loved to play catch. He threw a mean curved ball, that's for sure. Are you playing on your DS? <laughs> yes, you are. Okay, so... Pay our respects. And it's time to go. December 2nd, 1022. Which means a new case. So, yeah. We're, we're gonna leave it here for now. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please click the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. If you want to hang out with me, that is possible, or my buddies, that's also possible. <laughs> uh, we got a Discord channel, a uh, server, and the link is in the description, so you can just go there, hop in there, talk to us. Again, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.